welcome to Mining Stock Daily. I'm Kylie Williams, and today I'm joined by Cameron Teamstra, CEO of Tarachi Gold Corp. Welcome back to the podcast, Cameron. Thanks, Kylie. Thanks for having me back on the show. Now, last week, we reported on some news from Tarachi in the morning briefing, some drill results from the historic Ladura mine in Sonora, Mexico. So before we jump into the geology and the active projects that you have, can you tell us a little bit about Tarachi? You've had quite the last 18 months. It's been quite busy for a new company. Thanks, Kylie. Yeah, Tarachi Gold is a pretty young company. It really came together uh, in the spring of last year uh, with a name change formerly from Cal Minerals to Tarachi Gold and with the signing of two option agreements, um, totaling a land package of about 3,700 hectares located in eastern Sonora within the Sierra Madre Gold Belt. And then earlier this year, we also acquired the Magistral Mill and Tailings Project, um, which is an asset that we really think is going to set the company apart from the rest of the junior mining sector and uh, that it provides us a pathway to actually produce gold in the very near term and get to a cash flow positive status so we can actually self fund our own exploration going forward. Can you give us an overview of those two projects, a little bit more about the exploration side uh, and then a bit more about the, the tailings facility? So our Tarachi Exploration Project in Sonora, the first project that we acquired, um, is located um, in the same vicinity as Alamos Gold's Mulatos Mine and Agnico Eagle's La India Mine. So we're very much in elephant country here. Uh, our land package spans a pretty wide area and covers a, a number of a number of regions. Um, but the two main mining concessions that we've been actively exploring on over the past 12 months uh, include our San Javier concession, which is to the north, uh, and our Habali concession, which is the one that those drill results from last week came from. Uh, Habali has a, a sort of an old underground past producing mine there. All the drill holes to date that we've released from Habali were actually drilled from within the old underground mine workings. Uh, and there at Habali, we're targeting um, sort of what we describe as a mineralized panel, dipping roughly sort of 30 degrees to the east and then plunging about 25 degrees to the south. And within this very solidified panel is where we find um, the high grade gold zones, including some of those great ones that we released last week, uh, including over an ounce per ton, um, over just over five meters. So uh, that project is located really close to the Mulatos mine. Uh, in fact, the road to Mulatos crosses over that property. Um, so we're only about five or six kilometers away from there. So we're definitely in an area that's very uh, familiar with mining operations. Um, you know, certainly certainly adds to the value of our own asset as well. Uh, and then at San Javier, we're targeting um, a sort of a mineralized breccia system. And, and we encountered some good gold grades there last year um, with our initial drilling program. And we plan on going back there sort of in the next couple of weeks to follow up with the phase two program at San Javier as well. And in terms of our um, Magistral Mill and Tailings project, um, that one is located in the north of Durango State. This is uh, an area that's seen sort of not really in exploration or mining for a considerable amount of time, but sort of in the period from 1890 to 1960, there was a large underground mining operation there that we estimate produced about a million ounces of gold. Uh, and it's the tailings from those operations that we now have access to, uh, as well as the acquisition of a processing facility that we have at Magistral. And that processing facility was custom built to actually reprocess and extract gold from these high grade gold tailings that are uh, just sitting adjacent to the plant. Uh, and this is a facility that we, we just acquired a couple months ago. We're very excited about and uh, we're working very hard this year to, to get that online. And let's talk a little bit more about Magistral. You have a background as a, a mining engineer. Can you tell us a bit more about the process of uh, looking at these tailings, deciding how rich they are, because it must be very different to, to drilling new holes into fresh rock. Um, how do you establish uh, the richness of those tailings? Well, the first step is certainly a form of drilling. Um, right now we have an auger drill on site, um, doing an extensive drill program across that tailings basin. Uh, most of the tailings that we find there are typically just between five and 15 meters in depth. So they're, it's pretty shallow drilling. It's pretty easy going. Um, so we extract out this tailings material um, from that drilling program. And we are currently doing a preliminary economic assessment with Asenko Engineering. And so this drilling program is really the first step in that. And it's going to provide us the material that we need to collect assays so that we can provide a, an NI43-101 compliant resource estimate of the tailings, the same way that you would do for a hard rock resource. And this drilling program is also going to provide us with some sort of bulk composite material that can represent the whole tailings basin, and then we can use that with Asenko Engineering up here in Canada to do some additional metallurgical test work to make sure that the existing flow sheet in the facility that we acquired um, really has the, the best flow sheet to move forward with in terms of gold recoveries and operating costs, or whether or not there's some areas that we can make some adjustment, adjustments or modifications or additions in terms of equipment to perhaps improve 
the the economics of the project. But you know, in terms of the process of actually mining tailings, um, there's certainly a lot of benefits to that compared to a conventional gold mining operation at Hard Rock Resource. That is, we don't have to do any drilling and blasting. We don't have to strip over any overburden. We don't have to haul any ore or waste rock up out of a pit or up a mine shaft. Um, we don't have to do any crushing. Uh, and in most cases for tailings operations, often you don't have to do any grinding as well. And, and those activities typically represent about, you know, usually 80% of all the energy input required to, to produce an ounce of gold. Um, so one of the great things that we like about this as well is sort of from the, the ESG side of things, the environmental side, in terms of, you know, we are we are producing gold or going to be producing gold hopefully very soon for a fraction of the energy input requirements for typically conventionally mined ounce of gold uh, and a fraction of the carbon output as well associated with with gold production. So certainly on the mining side, it's it's a much more simple than than a traditional gold mining operation or copper mining operation. Uh, but it's usually the processing end that that differs quite a bit or at least a little bit from the from a conventional mine. And so one of the issues and one of the technical challenges that we think we'll have with this operation is the presence of some cyanide soluble copper in the tailings. Uh, that copper was left over from, from the old resource and from the old mining operations because it can have a tendency to consume a lot of cyanide and sort of drive up your operating costs. And so one of the main things that Asenko Engineering is going to be looking at when they do this metallurgical test work for us is finding ways to sort of mitigate that presence of copper and maybe remove some of it prior to cyanidation or find ways to sort of make sure that it doesn't go into solution and sort of reduce our operating costs and improve economics of the project that way. So you know, I'm always very excited about the tailings operations. As you mentioned, I, I do have a bit of a background in that. I've worked on a couple mining operations in the past where we were reprocessing tailings. So I, I can certainly appreciate the benefits on the environmental side of things and the cost side of things as well. Um, so it's a very exciting project for us. And, and we think the fact that we can bring this online, probably commissioning it early next year, uh, and getting the cash flow from that will certainly benefit the company in allowing us to, to self-fund our exploration going forward. How old is the the tailings mill that you have purchased there at Magistral? Uh, it's a very recent facility. Um, the existing facility right now, which has a Merrill Crow system in it, um, was only completed, I think, in around 2017, 2018. And it's basically been sitting on care and maintenance ever since. So it's pretty much brand new. It's never really been used before. Uh, there's only been a few tons that have been sent through it. And I don't think they ever actually uh, had any cyanide really running through it. And I don't think the Merrill Crow system's ever been used before. So we we had an opportunity to go down just before purchasing the asset to see it for ourselves and I guess kick the tires, as they say. And we were really impressed with what we saw there in terms of the, the quality and condition of the facility and the plant that's there and all the equipment. Um, they've done a great job of, of taking care of it. It's probably the cleanest mine site I've ever been on, probably because it's not operating, but it was great to see. And we were really impressed with, with what we saw there. I mean, it has a, a brand new ball, ball mill that's never been used before. Um, you know, most of the motors and pumps are, are pretty new. So we really think we got uh, a great deal on this project and are really excited to be moving forward with it. Do you mind if I ask what happened to the company that built it and then never used it? Yeah, I think a couple of you know, poor events that kind of all lined up uh, on bad timing on their part. And um, basically, they had originally built a carbon and leach system to recover the gold. But uh, due to the presence of that cyanide soluble copper that I mentioned, a uh, carbon extraction system isn't very good because the, the copper takes up all the spots on the on the carbon instead of the gold. And so they then had to spend a bunch more money to uh, double the size and, and install the Merrill Crow system. And then around the same time, they had a stormwater event in their tailing storage facility that caused it to flood and some cyanide containing water to flood into the local stream system. So they were ordered shut down for that. Uh, and they had to build a big diversion ditch all the way around their, their tailings pond. And, you know, kind of a couple of things in a row didn't, didn't go right. And I guess uh, they probably ran into some financial troubles, I would imagine. So it's basically been sitting idle for the last three years. And uh, so it was great for us to, to be able to acquire that and bring in some more capital and, and put it back into production. Absolutely. And so you're hoping to achieve commercial production at Magistral mid-2022 or so, um, and you're planning to use those funds to work on your exploration. So what, what are your plans for the rest of this year? Do you have the resources to still work on some exploration this year um, before that mill gets up and running? We do, yeah. We're still pretty well financed with, I think, just a little under $3 million in the bank right now. Um, which is great to great for us to carry Magistral forward and complete that PEA um, by midsummer that we're doing with the Senko Engineering uh, and some of the other work that we're doing at Magistral in terms of uh, the permitting and getting the plant hooked up to the power grid and things like that, um, as well as some cash available to deploy on Tarachi for the exploration project. Um, once we finish up this drilling that we're doing right now at the tailings facility, which we expect to complete by the end of this week, our geology team will then be moving up to our San Javier mining concession 
where we did some drilling and had some great results at the end of last year to follow up at the, the deeper extent of those mineralized breaches that we were targeting there. So we're going to do just a small program there, probably four holes, maybe five holes. Um, and by that time, we expect to have uh, the remaining results from the Havali concession, where we announced some of those great holes just last week. Um, we've done since some surface drilling around Havali as well, testing sort of the southern extension of the mineralized body that we're targeting. And so once we have the, the results from that surface RC rig, we'll be able to determine, you know, what's the next step for Havali. Do we go back there with another surface rig and continue expanding to the south and down dip to the east? Or where do we go next there? So uh, within the next couple of weeks, we expect to have those assays back and then we can start building a plan for phase three. So how deep are the historic workings at Havali? Uh, they're quite shallow. I mean, these are mostly artisanal workings down there. Um, there's not a whole bunch of different levels and, and stopes and things like that. It's really just one big open cavern in space. From the drill rig that we had, I mean, that drill rig was probably only 25 meters underground. Uh, and, the, and the deposit itself, we believe, dips only about 30 degrees to the east. So uh, pretty shallow overall. I think from our surface rig, we're starting to hit that um, that mineralized area at depths of only about 20, 25 meters from surface. So the benefit too is it plunges to the south, but the natural topography also sort of dips down to the south. So we sort of follow it as well and it stays pretty close to surface. Well, it sounds like you've got three really good projects that are very different from each other. So it'll be very convenient to kind of step from one to the next to the next as conditions change. Yeah, we're trying to build a bit of a development pipeline at Tarachi. So Magistral is certainly at the very end of the, the development pipeline coming online, hopefully next year. Um, and then our San Javier concession sort of in the greenfields uh, end of things and, and Abali sort of a little bit more in between those two because there has been some historical production there and we've already had some some great drill results. Um, you know, one of the things we're also doing at Tarachi is we always keep our eye open for other potential projects to bring into the company. Um, we would love to acquire something that is maybe even a little more in the middle of the road in terms of the development pipeline, perhaps something that is also another past producing mine, but perhaps on a larger scale than Habali, or something that already has some ounces defined in, in some of the resource categories, perhaps a couple hundred thousand ounces that we could uh, expand on and sort of march towards production and use the cash flow from Magistral on that as well. And the Magistral Mill and Tailings project itself does sort of represent some um, I guess you call it a foothold asset in the north of Durango State there. And those old underground mine workings that produced what we estimate is close to a million ounces in the past is only a couple of hundred meters away from the actual tailings basin we're going to be mining. And, and while we don't currently own those mining concessions, uh, that's something we're certainly very interested in and active in, in seeking out those owners and determining whether or not um, there's any interest in vending those. Uh, we know there hasn't really been any modern exploration in the area since the mines closed down probably in the early 1960s. Uh, so certainly some potential there to find additional mineralization either along strike or at depths. Thanks, Cameron. It sounds like you're going to have a really busy 2021 and into 2022. Uh, thanks for joining us on the show today and hopefully we can talk again later this year and hear how everything's progressing. Well, thank you, Kylie, for having me on the show again. And there's certainly a lot to look forward to for Tarachi over the next couple of months, um, both with drill results on the way and as we progress Magistral towards production. The information presented should not be considered investment advice. Mining Stock Daily and its affiliates are not responsible for any loss arising from any investment decision in connection with the material presented herein. Please do your own research or speak with a licensed financial representative before making any investment decision.